You're listening to Sound, Sound. Insightful. Insightful. Insightful Bible Teaching for a Meaningful, meaningful. For a meaningful, meaningful Christian walk. walk. So how about we start with the, f- with the first verse? Well, I'm pretty loud, aren't I? That's good? Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's start together by reading this first verse. Um, the first two verses. So 1 Peter 1.23 and then Matthew 13.3. This is our beginning. This is our beginning as believers. So they're very appropriate verses to start. Start. Having not of corrupt, but of incorruptible, through the living and abiding word of God. And he spoke many things. So all of us as believers have been regenerated, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. So what happened to all of us as believers was Christ himself is a living seed got sown into our hearts. We became believers. We received the Lord. Our spirit became alive. Once we were dead in our trespasses and sins, then the Lord took care of all that. We believed in the Lord. And then our spirit was regenerated regenerated, you could say. That birth is the birth of Christ coming into our spirit. And that, the Lord said, he's the sower. So if you know that Matthew, that's our first book in the New Testament, there's the mysteries of the kingdom. And when the Lord begins to talk about the mysteries of the kingdom in chapter 13, he says, first, a sower went out to sow. And then there's different kinds of soil. And all the soil, when the seed gets in, it grows in different ways. And so we are the soil that we hope we are all the good soil. I believe you are all the good soil. And uh, we do have other things that compete for the growth. But the Lord in his wisdom, as a sower, he's also a farmer. So we need to read the next verse in James. Let's read that one together. This shows the Lord is the farmer. He's responsible for this uh, crop that he's growing on the earth. Let's read this together. Therefore, long-suffering brothers, until the coming of the Lord, behold, the farmer awaits the precious fruit of the earth, exercising long-suffering over it. So, you know, on the whole earth, God as the real farmer and the Lord as a real sower has sown himself into believers, and he is expecting a crop. He wants to see that seed grow up in all of us. And that seed growing up into us says he's eagerly awaiting. That's on God's side. He's eagerly awaiting. He's eagerly awaiting to see Christ grow in you, Christ mature in you, Christ develop in you. That's his hope as a farmer. It's his hope as a sower. Well, God has this hope. You know, we also need to cooperate. And that's in the next verse, 2 Peter 3.12. So I'll just read that to you. This is our stand. God's eagerly expecting to see this Christ grow in you. How about us? It's, the verse says, expecting and hastening the coming day of God. So expecting and hastening. Did you realize that we're expecting, but we're also speeding up the process. If we cooperate with God, if we cooperate with the Spirit in our spirit, then that seed in us is going to grow. That Christ is going to mature in you, and you're going to express God. You're going to live out God. You're going to uh, have the love of God coming out of you. You're going to have all the virtues that belong to Christ are going to be growing in you because he's the seed. He's the wonderful seed in you. So this is, uh, this is God's economy, like that song we sing. This is God's plan. It's God's arrangement. Um, so this expecting and hastening the coming day of the Lord, this is uh, our part. So God, in, in his part, he can provide some things to help us grow, and he does. Um, if we go down to uh, the middle of the page there, it says uh, Hebrews 12.10, 
maybe just so we're all on the same verses. Let's read the 12.10. How about we have the brothers read 10, Hebrews 12.10, and the sisters read 11. For they disappointed for a few days, as it seemed good to them. But he, for what is profitable, that we might partake of his holiness. The sisters. Now no disciples. Okay, we start again. No discipline. Go ahead, sisters. <laughs> now no discipline at the present time seems to be a matter of joy, but of grief. But afterward it yields to the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been exercised by So we see from this that God himself is arranging our environment. This is to discipline for a few days. This is his arrangement. You know, if you're a farmer, you have some arrangements. You don't just sow the seed in the soil and walk away from it. You provide something for that soil. You take care of the weeds. You take care of all the arrangements. In our case, sometimes God provides the, the hot sun. He provides the rain, maybe some storms. All these things, you may think, oh, this is difficult. That, that uh, plant in the middle of the field with the sun baking down on it may feel like, oh my goodness, I'm withering. I'm, I'm, I don't know what to do. But you know that's God's design. Because when you do that to that plant, the roots go down deeper. Seeking, seeking to have more nourishment. Just like we do with the Lord. Sometimes the Lord dis puts things in our environment that are difficult, puts things in our environment so that we have to turn to him. We have to call on the Lord's name. We have to open our hearts. And when we do that, our roots are going down and we're absorbing more of Christ, less of ourselves. Matter of fact, sometimes we're in a certain environment and we find out that, wow, in this environment, I'm, the way I'm expressing myself, like I have that happen with my wife, a lot of times because I, maybe I lose my temper or I say something harsh, then the Lord has to touch me. Did you just live Christ then? Did I just express Christ or was that myself? Then I have to turn. I have to say, Lord, I need you. I need you to grow in me in this area, in my relationships. So these are all things the Lord provides in our environment. You know, and I could, I could blame that environment. I could resist that environment. But you know, the Lord's wise. As a wise farmer, he provides the environment we need for the growth in life. And if, if we cooperate with the Lord, then Christ can grow in us in that environment. So we, we just have to thank the Lord that he is that wise farmer. And sometimes we have, you know, the crop in Matthew, just to mention, if you ever look in Matthew 13, there's four different kinds of soil but there's a couple soils there. One, there's rocks in the soil. You know, sometimes when you want to experience the Lord, did you ever experience just kind of a hardness in your heart? Maybe you really got hard towards some uh, brothers or sisters, or you got really hard to a certain situation. You weren't open at all. Well, we have those things in us so that seed in us, Christ, can grow in deeper into that soil. Or maybe there's thorns. Thorns, according to the Lord, is thorns are things that try to choke it. There are, there are ambitions. There are the world telling us we need to sell out to the world. We need this. We need that. And those things can choke the growth of Christ in us. So it's a beautiful picture to see. We have Christ in us, and this seed is growing in us. Um, you know, the verse said, uh, no discipline at the present time seems to be a matter of joy. So this is certainly the case. We have many things we may face, but remember, God is the farmer. And how can you help cooperate? You can cooperate by opening to the Lord. It's not that you can become a better person by trying harder. The seed's in you. You've got Christ in you. That Christ in you can live himself out. That Christ in you can mingle with you. And then that is God's expression on the earth. So this is what the Lord is looking for. Um, so when we're talking today about making ourselves ready for the Lord's coming, we realize the Lord's a farmer. 
What's he looking for? He's looking for that Christ to mature on the earth. And there's a lot of things happening on the earth today that are not healthy, not good, not positive. But when the Lord looks at the earth, yes, he may see all the sin, corruption, darkness, and trouble. But you know, when he looks at the earth, he's looking at you. And he has such a hope that that Christ in you is going to grow. That Christ in you is going to mature. So that's, even he knows the arrangements so that you can grow more in Christ. So if you look at, uh, there's another set of verses there. Uh, in Galatians, I'll just mention this verse. Paul says, My children with whom I travail again in birth until Christ is formed in you. Christ formed in you. This is God's goal. And then um, 2 Corinthians says, we're being transformed. Transformed means there's a metabolic inner change happening in our being. By letting Christ grow in us, we're becoming transformed. And what do we end up looking like? It says we're being transformed into the same image. That means Christ is being formed in you. You're becoming more an expression of Christ on the earth. And this, in the end, is God's goal for, for us. That's his goal for us is to be the church that expresses him and lives him out. Then um, if you look at Colossians 1.28, the next verse says, Christ whom we announce, admonishing every man, teaching every man that we may present every man full grown in Christ. So again, this is the hope. And this is the hope we have what for one another. We have a hope that Christ will be formed in each of us. And maybe sometimes when we are together, we may offend one another. Or we may say something to one another that could cause us to uh, doubt that Christ is being formed in that person. Or, well, that person's so mean to me. I, that, what they said was so harsh, I, I can't receive that. But you know what? It says we have to have a hope. Every person can become full grown in Christ. So we have a hope, just like God has a hope, for each of us to grow into the fullness of Christ. So this is the this is way God looks at his crop, his wonderful crop that he sowed into the earth and that he's expecting to see. And this is our cooperation with the Lord. Um, now, I want to mention something in the, toward the end of these verses. In Matthew 24, the Lord talks about a crop here. And this may be a little mysterious, but this is, uh, a lot of people refer to this as a section on the rapture. Um, it says, at that time, two men will be in the field, one's taken, one's left. Two women grinding at the mill, one's taken, one is left. So why are they taken, and what does that mean? You know, when the Lord sees the growth of Christ, there is an element when a farmer sees a crop maturing and he goes out into the, out, say, into the apple orchard and he sees an apple that's starting to get really red. And he, he watches that apple. Mm, that apple's almost ready to be picked. That is called the first fruit. When, you, when that apple is mature and ready, it's no longer bitter. It's no longer hard. It becomes very soft. It becomes red. It's full of flavor. That is the way the Lord looks at his people. When we mature in Christ, we could be the first fruits. So what does the farmer do with the first fruit? He brings them into his house. He brings them in so he can enjoy them. And there is a evidence in the Bible that there is a, there is a rapture. And that rapture is the first fruits. That means some among all the Christians on the earth are going to ripen before others. So if we will be pursue the Lord strongly and help one another to grow mature in Christ, we could become those first fruits. And we have a picture in uh, Revelation 12.5. This is talking about, there's a universal woman in chapter 12 and uh, you have to look at this passage in 12, but 
It says that this woman, which represents the church universally, this is all the true believers, not false believers, all the true believers who have Christ as their life, but this woman, out of the church, out of the true believers, the Lord gains a man-child. He gains a more mature part. He gains a part that's more ripened, more ready. And that part in Revelation is called the man-child. Uh, this recently, I really enjoyed this verse a lot. Man-child. Man is the, has to do with maturity in the Bible. The man is referred to it that the woman is the weaker part, the man is the stronger part. So the man is a, related to this is in the Bible is that it is a stronger part of the church. But at the same time, it says child. That means this person is very dependent on the Lord. They're not independent of the Lord. They're not living separate from the Lord. They're not using their own energy, their own strength. They are a child before the Lord. They're dependent on the Lord. They need the Lord. That's when we really can mature, is when we let the Christ in us and depend on the Christ in us to grow and mature. Then we can become a man-child. We can become that first fruit. So I think that this man-child in Revelation 12 is like a really good picture of the first fruit because this man-child, you notice it says, this man-child is going to shepherd all the nations with an iron rod. This will be in the millennium. And her child is caught up to God into his throne. She gets raptured. Why does she get raptured? This man-child gets raptured? Because there's maturity there. And this is what we want to grow up into maturity, which is the full development of Christ in us. The full development so that on the earth, God will have a crop. And this crop will be his first fruit, and this crop could be his man-child. And if you know Revelation 12, once the man-child shows up, Satan gets cast down. And, and, and the end is coming fast. The three and a half years of tribulation will come fast. Because the man-child now has matured to the point where Satan can no longer have ground in the heavens. He's cast down. And a lot of stuff, things start to happen on the earth. But what's God looking for? He's looking for that man-child. He's looking for you and me as a corporate body to be built up, to love the Lord, to, to express the Lord on the earth, so dependent on the Lord, needing the Lord, depending on his life, living Christ, not depending on my own strength. That's the child part. The man part is maturity, growth. So um, at the end of Philippians, Paul says, this before Paul, wasn't that much longer, Paul's going to go um, suffer martyrdom. But he says, not that I have already obtained or am already perfected, but I pursue if I may lay hold of that. So Paul was saying, I want to achieve to this. I have a goal. Uh, actually, Philippians 3.11, I should have read that one first. If I may attain to the out-resurrection. The out-resurrection is the extra-resurrection. It's the, it's the uh, growth and the maturity of, of being an overcomer. And Paul was aiming for that. Paul was aiming for that, as, and he's our pattern. We should be like Paul. Pursue the Lord, gain the Lord, forget everything else. And he said, I'm just... I don't say I've already been perfected. I'm not already full grown, but I keep pursuing so that I can mature with all the other believers who are, could become the first fruits, all the other believers who could become the man-child. And when the Lord gets that, he's going to say, oh, I got my crop. I, got my, I raised up my crop. My crop grew. My crop matured. My crop developed. Now I have... Christ expressed through the church. And that group, that overcoming group, that's the group that I need to close this age. And when the Lord gets that, believe me, we could end the age. The Lord could return. But he has to have that. Because why did Christ get sown into our hearts? Not just so that I have a ticket to heaven. 
But to see Christ grow in each of us, to see Christ mature in you, that's the farmer's thought. The farmer's thought is, I want to see that matured fruit grow. That's the Lord's hope too. So maybe I just stop here and uh, we can uh, break into some fellowship groups. You have a question. So what are some practical applications of how do I allow this Christ to grow in me? What are some, some ways, some kind of tips or like some sort of application of how, how to let Christ grow? Well, probably can talk about that in your groups, right? But I would say, I say we have a lot of opportunities um, because God in his sovereignty gives us different people, different circumstances, different environments. Any environment where you're tested or you feel you're, you're lacking is a chance for you to experience Christ, to turn to the Lord, to ask the Lord to be be your person in that environment. To ask the Lord to be your strength to live out Christ in that environment. So these are sovereign arrangements by God. And we may not always agree with them, but we should go to the Lord and open to the Lord. Also, one thing is we need to be well fed. If you're not well fed, how can you face your day? The day is full of evil things, frustrating things, how can you grow in Christ? You need to be well fed. You need to feed on Christ to start your day. You need to feed, feed on the word. And by that, we get to supply. So that's a couple things I'd say.